Tubi. So, for my week three of Halloween, I'm going to be painting a cheap paint your own birdhouse kit. Got a couple years ago. Here it is. And as you can see, it comes with its own paint mold cheap brush I'm going to be using. So let me just get the plastic wrap off it that I'm assuming keeps it fresh. Now the shape of this one needs some sanding, but the shape of this one made me think of something you'd see in Halloween. I didn't use too many details, but I like how it turned out. As a cord to hang it, I decided to remove it, and I'm going to get a coated gesso, so I'm hoping this will seal the wood and keep it from really absorbing the paint. I only filmed doing the first coat, but I actually did two coats. Surprising how much the wood actually absorbed the gesso. After it dried, you could clearly see certain grains of the wood. Sucked it in. I also have to admit, this was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Of course, maybe the fact I'm filming it at the same time and have a camera sitting in front of me has something to do with it. Okay, now I'm going to be using this air dry clay I got from the Dollar Tree to make a little cat that I'm going to put on. Because what's well, a Halloween house that a black cat? This stuff, I don't know if it's because it's cheap or if it's because I've had it for a couple months now if it's dried out. So I got some more and tried to mix it and it did the same thing. Just cracks, doesn't want to stay together really couldn't sculpt the way I wanted it to look. So I'm trying to get the cracks to go away and I end up putting coats of tacky glue on this for the cracks, which was a mistake because the black paint I used on it didn't want to stick to the glue. It looked like I'd use crackle paint. I didn't film that part, but I did. Okay, now it's dry and I use some of that same air dry clay to plug up the holes the cord is in, and ignore those marks there for later. So I'm going to paint it a dark gray color for the main part. Yeah, this brush was a mistake. Didn't want to fit in my little airtight pot that I used for painting. Same ones I used for squishies. I will admit, it was nice using acrylic paint to paint some. I'm used to using fabric paint for squishies. This stuff dries a lot faster. Okay, now the roof. I've already sectioned off some tape. And that end tape is crooked. Fix it. Fix it now. There, that's better. And I'm going to be doing purple and... I wanted neon green, but I couldn't find neon green. So I've got some of the purple left over from when I painted that ornament. And yeah, this is going to take several coats. In fact, they all end up taking four coats to go be opaque. Yeah, nice thing about acrylic paint, dry fast. Okay, now I've covered them up so you can't see them, and I'm going to start using this as close as I could find to neon green in this paint. I'm not willing to pay more. So I put some into my little pot here so it's easier to get to. And I was actually afraid this is going to take a lot of coats because it was awfully sheer, but four coats covered. I never call it lime green, but it really looks like a sour apple here. See, I think in the stripes you usually see on witch socks. Notice the other side, I reversed the colors. Okay, now I'm going to paint a moon. Of course I had to paint a moon. I end up doing two coats. This is the same paint I used on the ornament when I painted the moon. These little paint pots work well for keeping paint liquidy. And I struggle a little bit getting it. Now I'm going to use my acrylic markers. You know I love them. And put my initials instead of the thing. And now the eaves, I'm going to one side's going to be black, the other side's going to be orange. And on the other side, I'll reverse it. Okay. 
Honestly, it would have been a lot easier if I had just got some black paint and brush and done it this way. Because the edges of these woods, these woods, the edge of this wood is not smooth. And now for the orange. I end up doing two coats of this orange. And doing this orange is when I really wished I had just used regular paint. I think I'd have to mix orange though. I don't think I have any orange. Yeah, and it splattered onto the the dark gray body, but I thought it kind of looked like stars or something. Now for the edges, of course I have to go metallic. So metallic gold for the roof. Oops. Now I actually planned the base to outline it in silver, but I changed my mind, just painted it. And the inside I did silver, but then I, here's the cat all painted. And I forgot to film it, but I added a small amount. I also made a little, I called it a charm bottle. On the cat, back to the cat's eyes, I add a small amount of neon yellow puff paint. So when you shine a black light on it, the eyes light up like a cat's. I'm just using my tacky glue. I was actually afraid it'd be too thin and the cat would fall over, but it looked great. By the way, if you're wondering about the hole in the cat's butt, I stuck it on a toothpick while it was drying. And there it is. I had planned on putting cobwebs on, but I changed my mind. See, I colored the little peg silver and the inside of the pole silver. Ran out of paint on the back there, so I had to water it down. I had a black line on the top to cover up some crossovers. Thanks for watching.